actually i just was making the question only so didn't get much time to uh, write the question yeah, yeah. so let's start with the uh, first question only like i have uh, have some basic question also and some you can say scenario based till dr world okay okay so let's start with the very basic question like what are the services of the world yeah the services of the world are like uh, a logic container uh, disaster recovery database uh, event notification engine a hardened windows firewall a vault server okay and adding to manikanta one more private arc so private arc service yep private arc server service Cool. Okay. Uh, what is the main configuration file of Vault? DB Param dot timeline. DB Param dot timeline. Oh, yeah. And main log file of the Vault? ITL log. ITL log. Okay. And can anyone tell like what are the prerequisites to install the standalone Vault and also the HA Vault? yeah so the main prerequisite is like uh, uh, .net 4.4.8 uh, and above should be installed on the machine and uh, before installing we need to remove all the uh, network cards except the ipv4 so these are the two things for a uh, uh, standard uh, going to the uh, ha uh, we need to have a, a sand network uh, sand disk like a storage disk and the quorum disk we should have that's it and also we are, we need the operator and master keys and the license okay upon and dot net framework is required 4.5 or 4.8 okay and server should be patched latest security and security like it should be hardened no before uh, installing server should be patched okay and main thing you are forgetting uh we should have a public and private network cards there and one virtual ip address so we need to require for for which world uh sorry name uh for which world you are saying which world we we need private uh, a private ip and virtual ip yeah for ha for ha ha okay and what's the use of virtual ip why we can't install without the virtual ip uh, uh this is a hitch right so when uh, one uh, if one is down and the other one will be up and running so uh, every time we need to change uh, give the manual ips to the uh, other components when we have a virtual uh, ip there so we can use directly there and virtual ip is also used for the internal communication for uh, both the worlds Right. Okay, for internal communication, virtual IP is being used. So, what's the use of private IP then? It should be communicate. I mean, uh, that means it should communicate with all the environment. Uh, like. Okay. So then, what's the use of private IP? Why we need private IP? Can't we use? the only public ips okay uh, so after we discuss all this question at the end we will uh, i will be just explaining all the questions again okay yes uh, so what's the use of quorum disk guys anyone can tell me the use of quorum disk yeah quorum disk is used to like uh, know which server is up and running for the other one okay then what's the use of cvm then cluster vault manager okay so when you let's say when you install the ha vault so there is a service yeah. cluster vault manager cvm yes you have seen 
Yes. So then, what's the use of that service? Because both side it's up and running. Yeah. On passive also it will be running on an active also. So the quorum is used to check the health of the uh, the walls in here. So based on that, uh, the CVM service will uh, now be service up and running. No. So let's say I don't want to use the quorum disk. So still uh, your CVM your will be be running and will it be able to switch from one node to another node? Okay, so let's move to next question. We'll explain uh, after this uh, all the questions we are done. Okay, uh, next question is uh, how you can collect logs and main files. Let's say uh, you want to raise a case with CyberArk support, and CyberArk support is asking for you need to uh, provide all the main configuration file plus log file, everything in a zip file. So manually, if you will collect, it will take um, some time. But let's say if you want to uh, collect all those logs using some command, how we can do that? Anyone is aware of the command? Uh, no need. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving to our next question. If you see database is corrupt in logs let's say you are checking the logs and you find like it's showing database is corrupt and your private arc server is not coming up so how you can fix this okay so if it uh, the server is not running up then uh, however the first thing we need to go for the dr uh, we need to up, up the dr1 and once the dr is up uh, we need to either reinstall the uh, server and uh, set the DR back again. That might be one case. Okay. Let's say DR is everything is up and running. Uh, you still need to uh, fix the this primary one. Yeah. So. I think we can uh, uh, we can remove the SQL. Uh, it will not. So you want to remove the SQL database from the server? Related APK files or anything then might be reinstalling. Will that be fixed? Uh, repair, uh, repair the cyber arc world, uh, Neil. No. Because as you know, database is important. Yeah, yeah but uh, when we uh, repair that, so it will reinstall the existing files or uh, if anything more, no, that will fix it. Right? it won't. Machine is hardened and it won't allow and also it will not update that database, existing database. So whenever, let's say you install a new vault every time, like the encryption and everything is new. Okay. And repair will also not fix it. Okay. Uh, moving to our next question, which database is being used by the vault? MySQL. Uh, MySQL. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving to our next question. Can PVWA be installed on physical server? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is the main prerequisite to install PVWA? IIS server. IIS services. Okay. .NET 4.8 IIS are the main things. Okay. And which is the main configuration file of PVWA? Uh, web config file. Okay. Okay, uh, what are the internal users of PWA and what are their functioning? 
PWA app and PWA gateway users. Okay. And PWA app is responsible for bringing up the page, uh, initial page, and the gateway user is responsible for uh, uh, user login and their credentials. Okay. Like impersonation. Okay. So can this PWA gateway user can allow the master user log into PWA? No. no. Uh, the master user can only log in from uh, the server uh, where the uh, server is installed or from the remote station using the private account. Okay, so what's the reason like master user cannot log into VW? Any specific reason like why like CyberArk doesn't allow master to log into PWA? Uh, just for only security purpose. Of course, cyber, you, if you log into private our client or PWA, so it's the cyber act thing only. So if master user will log into PWA, then there is no nothing related to security. If someone knows the password, they can log in. But why cyber act don't restrict the master user login? Uh, I think uh, as per authentication, like uh, in when we are up, um, either LDAP or private or uh, cyber arc, uh, authentication, but master user. The same only, let's say if I... you log into private arc client, there is also cyber arc authentication is there. And in PWW also you have cyber arc authentication, just like administrator. Cyber arc administrator also log in from private arc client and same it log in from the PWW also. So, okay, moving to our next question, how you can update the certificate of uh, PWA URL, you have a website, how you can update a certificate, let's say your certificate is going to expire. And if that certificate will expire, so your PWA will not load, it will give an error. So that, yeah, that can be done from IIS web settings uh, bindings. Okay. In IF, you can change. Yep. So, how you will get a new certificate? And what kind of certificate it will be? It is self signed yeah. certificate we can get from uh, like uh, Windows AD team. Self signed certificate is already there. Or the... self certificate we can directly get from the why we can import, we can export a certificate in server itself. No, self-signed certificate is already there when you install a machine, so already self-signed certificate gets generated. And it, so the certificate we can get from either a certification authority or a EDT. Okay. What kind of certificate it will be? Uh, SSL certificate. Okay, there are some extension you have of certificate, like it should be a dot .cer, a dot... Um, uh, it is a dot pm yep and there are more it's a dot pm file okay so does that certificate contains a private key um like we have to convert it again like a the, I mean, we can convert in a Google by, I mean, a key and along with a certificate, we can convert it and we can directly upload, like we used to do that in general. So, so uh, I mean, a key, key file is different and we, there are a two files, two, two or three files. Uh, two files, one is a key file and one is a, uh, another file. So we have to merge it and have to convert into one file so is it fine to convert the uh, your you can say csr from google you are passing the critical information on google and any site you are using let's say digital signer or any komodo to convert it so that is storing the those information in the background 
Okay. Yeah, I do. But that's not related to this private key. So, what's the use of the private key? So, let's say have anyone have raised the CSR certificate signing request because if you are let's say you are going to the certificate authority team they will ask you please provide the csr then only they they can provide you the certificate because it's not a root certificate like they can just download from any site and they can provide you because csr what csr contains csr contains your a certificate your server detail like which server it is your locality state a country and if it is having some dns also okay what is dns guys it's a domain naming system uh, what's the use of dns so your uh, dns means so instead of uh, our ips like uh, there will be a specific address bind to that mission so instead of, uh, if we have it that uh, ip that might be changed on a dynamic way but if it's a dns naming that is a static one because let's say i am defining a static ip so how it will change yeah if it's in a static like it uh, there is no way to change then what's the use of dns because let's say uh, okay vault is a part of work group or domain it's a work group so why we keep the vault in work group so to uh, to isolate from uh, uh, other systems so if anything uh, attack happens on the ad level so it will not be uh, impact on this one okay. then how uh, vault connects to ad because vault is a part so, of work group yeah. and how it communicates to ad then uh, we we add this uh, address details in the host entry file okay then why we add the host entries uh, to resolve like uh, ip uh, if it's a direct ip then uh, the mission can resolve but if it's a dns name then a uh, mission might not be the uh, the work mission might not resolve so when we bind those two things uh whenever it got a uh, request on that so it can directly convert that to dns into the ip and it can reach to the uh, ad server okay so now then what's the use of dns yeah go ahead what's the use of dns for better naming convention here yeah? no you 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 only said na like uh, vault cannot resolve that ad address it needs the ip address and vault is a part yeah. of work group must resolve the yes, address yes that's it because if let's say let's say uh, you install the pww and pww is a part of domain so did we provide the any dns entry the host entries for pww no because it's a part of domain it's already part of the ad only so it no need of dns because you make a dns entry you remember when how you make a, a server a part of dns a part of domain first you need to make the dns entry only you go to ipv4 there you provide the uh, ip address of your ad correct right. and then you are making it but in in the case of vault we don't do that because vault should be always the part of the work group only that's why we provide those uh, ip address and the uh, address of ad fqdn so it will whenever it needs to connect to the ad it will just use that thing it will resolve that address uh, that fqdn to ip address because your machine understand they talk to each other via ip address only okay okay uh, anyone have raised the csr before anyone have changed the uh, you let's say the certificates on pww url yeah no so some long time back okay any anyone can tell how to raise a csr then 
बिकॉज योर सर्टिफिकेट सर्टिफिकेशन अथॉरिटी टीम और एडी टीम दे विल नॉट बी रेजिंग अ सीआर दे विल जस्ट आस्क यू प्लीज प्रोवाइड दिस सीआर आई डिडंट राइट दैट बट व्हेन यू टोल्ड द कोर्स ऑन यूट्यूब सो एट दैट टाइम आई मॉडिफाइड द सर्टिफिकेट बाय वाचिंग अ न्यू वीडियो बट आई डिडंट राइट इट ओके ओके मूविंग टू अ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओके लेट्स से इफ यू हैव ओनली वन लाइसेंस to install cpm but your client is saying i wanted to install two cpm then how you can achieve this how you can do that have you heard about the hot uh, cpm and cold cpm standby cpm or passive cpm uh no no okay anyone no we haven't because the most of the like um, i think that will it exist because like cpm policies or will change again passive and uh, active it will not happen with the cpm right okay that's the case no like uh, let's say if a company is saying uh we cannot have the more license we can only have one cpm license but we need two cpm because if let's say after all it's a machine your if let's say one cpm fails then you can use the another cpm it's a you can say it's a kind of backup you are having passive if one is failing one let's say server is crashed for the active P, active cpm then how we can use the second cpm Okay. Moving to our next question: How CPM communicates to PWA directly? Through API. Ah, uh, yep. And from which version it started communicating to PWA? After ten point seven. Yep. Okay. So can you repeat the answer once again? Number. Yeah, I, to API, the CPM is to communicate with PWA on there is HTTP port four four three, and after version ten point seven, it started. So that is why the installation was like component installation was previously CPM was installed before. Now it is changed. Yep. So uh, this API REST API, you can say it was introduced in ten point seven. so after 10.7 whatever version was there 10.8 and all so your installation sequence got changed mm -hmm. thank you okay okay uh, can we load balance the cpm no 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 oh. except the cpm we can uh, load balance the remaining one like pure wd and uh, psm okay so what's the reason why we don't uh, load balance the cpm Uh, to avoid the split brain, uh, split brain scenarios. Okay. So what is split brain scenario? So the split brain scenario means like uh, when we have a uh, two CPMs and uh, they are on the load balance, then it will be like a, a conflict between the password changes, and the passwords might be a uh, mismatch between uh, the, uh, in the actual place and in the world. So that was we call. Okay. let's say you have only one cpm only so low this split split brain scenario will not occur then i mm, will not occur in the sense uh, if that a uh, password got directly changed at the target system uh, without a uh, uh, cyber so in that case it will occur but in that no, case no, we let's can say, cancel the uh, cpm is uh, no one is changing the password directly on target machine one only one cpm you have you have your stand alone production stand alone rdr so yeah one cpm cannot cause the split brain scenario yeah no it cannot cause okay so let's say you said like uh, if there are two cpm if they are load balanced how you can load balance two cpm if it is not supported yeah it however it is not supported if in case like it went like that so it will cause the first brain scenarios 
Okay. So let's say I have created one cluster and in cluster I have placed two CPM and uh, two CPM means both uh, let's say if someone wants to talk to any of the CPM it's a virtual IP means hmm. if let's say you are going to hit that virtual IP it will automatically redirect to any of the CPM and what you have did now you have created a safe okay so let's say when you create a safe how many uh, CPM you can assign to that safe only one okay so you assign one CPM then you have uh, clicked on the add member okay yes. so one CPM is already added you just uh, clicking on the add member you added the second CPM and you provided all the permissions now so whenever you are trying to hit the password it's the virtual IP which is getting hit correct and now like CPM is load balanced so is it possible No, in this case, like we are adding two CPMs for a single safe, right? Yep. But then how it can be balanced? Yeah, it's the so uh, virtual IP only, like we are using virtual IP. No, no. So in, for a single safe, we have assigned two uh, uh, CPMs, yes. right? Two password yep. manager. So in that case, whenever, like, so then how it will be a... Uh, uh, load balancer so if we want to balance like in a general scenario mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a cluster and everything uh, towards a single point like a single address everything is connected to a single point mm -hmm. and that point we use in a, anywhere so if something uh, like even in the PUWA so we used to have a single uh, address and that is connected to the multiple thing so whenever the user uh, connects to that using that address and it might be uh, connect to the any of the uh, PWA servers based on the yeah, algorithm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but here in this scenario, we are manually adding two CPMs into yeah, a single this, We are just adding the username only. We are not adding any IP address or something. If let's say you hmm. hit the change button, then your CPM gets activated. And if let's say it will go to CPM, it will go via that virtual IP only. Okay. Any of the CPM can be invoked. Hmm. And then it will start uh, changing the password. Okay. So is it possible or? Uh, no idea. No. Okay. okay. So anyone can tell me like uh, what's the workflow of password change? How CPM changes the password on target machine? So, uh, for uh, CPM changes, like uh, initially it will uh, get the password from the world and try to connect with the, uh, those credentials on the target mission using the port uh, 135, 139, or 443, any of these. And uh, if the password, four, like four, initially five. it verifies the password. Yeah, sorry, 445. If uh, initially it verifies the password, if that uh, password matches, then it will go for a uh, password change. If that doesn't match it, then it returns the error. Okay. And if it uh, changes the password, uh, like if it matches, it will uh, uh, modify the password on the target and uh, it's uh, write back the uh, new password into the world. Yeah, first it will again try to log in and then after that it will store the password in the world. Yep. Okay. So how CPM changes the password of a Windows account? How CPM connects to it? And how CPM come to know this is a Windows? I should log in via Windows. Let's say if you want to connect to a Windows, you would use a RDP something to connect to it. Yeah, like so how CPM so for every account, yeah, for every account we license it a platform, right? Based mm -hmm. on the platform, it will know. Okay. So what uh what configuration or what is responsible like that will uh, help cpm to know this is the that file actually uh, connectors connection components cpm will use connection component 
or that is for PSM. Connectors. PPC connectors. Okay. The ports, it will check if SSH it is 22. Okay. Let's say uh, CPM needs to connect, communicate to a Unix machine. So how it will communicate to it? Let's say password, everything is changing. So how it will come to know, let's say I want to connect to this machine or what are the commands written, where it will find it? Because there should be some process. CPM cannot just uh, directly go and change the password. Some commands or some script, something should be there. Or some plugins. Okay, let's say uh, you onboarded one account in uh, CyberArk and you are changing the password. So that change, you click on the change and it's showing like permission, you don't have permission or something you don't have. But when you hit the reconcile button, it's reconciling the password. And after reconcile, uh, you can say the passwords are sync. But again, you are hitting the change button again, your this is failing, change is failing. So how you can fix that issue? Uh, sorry, Anip, can you repeat again, if you don't mind? Yeah. Uh, so let's say you onboarded one account in CyberArk and uh, you are trying to change the password of that account. So when you hit the change button, so password is failing, like it's CPM is not able to change the password and it gives some error like permission denied or something. But when you hit the change button, sorry, uh, reconcile button, it's working fine. But after again uh, reconciling, again you are hitting the change, again it's failing. So how you can fix that issue? The uh, uh, for the change, the password manager might not have a sufficient permission snail on the safe so we need to check the because permissions for the password manager okay so in the reconcile case uh, it's using the password manager only mm, in reconcile case it will use the password manager only but uh, uh, for a login and uh, these things it will use the reconcile account right? account is everything unlocked it's not locked no, no, no. So it will log in uh, using the reconcile account and uh, uses the re reconcile account for the password change. Okay. Then which permission needs to have? Is, is the password manager or? Uh, the password manager should have uh, all the access on that safe. So it's already having. Okay. Then only your uh, reconcile is working. Na? If let's say your password mm -hmm. manager doesn't have enough space, it will give error in starting itself. The reconcile will also that, not work. That, that reconciliation account should be part of the administrator group and domain administrator group. Yeah, that's already there. That's why reconcile is working fine. But the account that the password uh, we are reconciling, so that account is used as a login when we are hitting the change button. Yep. So that should have permission. Yep. So your change is not having, because in if, let's say you hit the change button, so same account CPM will use to log in. So that's why change is not working. Uh, whereas reconcile is having all permission, so it's able to reconcile it. So let's say your AE team say, we cannot provide the those permissions to this change account, to the, to the main account. So in that case, how you can fix that issue? Uh, Neil, one question like, uh... How uh, the account uh, don't have, like what are the permissions that the account is not having for the change? The It doesn't have the reset permission, the password permission. Account is not part of the administrator. Or account doesn't have the permission to change its own password. That is set okay. on the AD. Okay. okay.
so let's say your ad team denies like we cannot provide the permission to this account so how you can fix then because on daily basis you won't be hitting the reconcile button correct because it's a yeah, manual it's thing uh, your password should let's say if there is a otp policy is there one time password so uh, everyone using that account and it should rotate the password but again it's failing and you are getting lots of tickets because for the same accounts because there are multiple uh, users using the same account and every time it uh, failing fail to change the password and makes it password out of sync so can we associate a logon account yep so in in that case logon account will be used to log in only it won't be changing it the password okay uh moving to next question so have we discussed this Uh, okay how to change password in reconcile mode so the reconciliation like uh, the reconcile account will be associated and that account will take care of a uh, uh, password change right yep but let's okay. say you hit the change button okay yes so in, when yes. you hit the change button also then also your password is getting reset that's the meaning of yes. the this change password in reconcile mode uh yeah so while well, compared to the change and the reconcile so the change will use the uh, existing password of the account and log into the uh, target machine and it will reset yep. itself and if you are in the reconciliation mode uh, the reconcile uh, it doesn't need the existing password it just use the reconcile account and using that the uh, the actual account uh, password will be reset okay yeah that's correct that's the workflow but you are hitting the change button and your reconcile account is only coming to picture and it's resetting the password to the same scenario where your main account doesn't have the permission and you need to reconcile that account only same question and same solution because when you hit the change button in that case also your reconcile is coming into picture and re resetting the password whether you hit the change or reconcile is the same account which is used to reset the password okay and this is one of the question you will find in your defender certification also okay moving to our uh, next question how to manage the passwords in group let's say there is there is a cluster unix team is there and they have one cluster and they have some uh, let's say five or 10 server inside it and they want the uh, address is different but there is account name is same and they want like password should be same for all the uh, servers so if let's say you are rotating the password of one account and that should be same on all the machines otherwise it will not log in you it will not allow the login to that server so how we can manage in that case how cpm can manage and it should have the same password in group and here in this case can't we use a usage platforms there no that that is for your dependencies yes yes if you if you are running let's say you are running some service using one account or you are running some registry or anything is app pool etc but here these are different different accounts and password of all account should be same okay in the platform management we have this option for groups so we can add all those accounts okay 
so there is a separate platform is there sample group platform so that by default that is inactive you need to activate that platform and then where you you find this like reconcile and log on thing below that you will find like create a group so you need to onboard every account and just create that group and all the account should have the same group should be part of the same group platform so when you will hit the change or reconcile it will have the same password it will sync the same password to all those accounts sample password yes. group for that that's the yeah, yeah correct okay moving to our next how psm connects to the target machine what is the workflow first that psm gateway user will uh, fetch the password uh, then uh, psm connect user will be used to log in to the target machine and once that uh, session is ended so psm app user will store the uh, recording in the psm recording safe no partially correct but not uh, yeah whenever the user uh, uh, hits on the correct it will download the rb file so when the user cl clicks on that uh, that file will connect to the psm uh, uh, psm server and the psm uh, uh, pw gateway user fetches the password for the psm connect and using that it will connect uh, land onto the psm machine from there it will establish the isolated session to the target machine no not correct partially you can say but not exact okay uh moving to our next question how uh, psm record the session let's say you might have seen like your session is being recorded and how it rec record that screen because when you will see in the monitoring tab it will show a video of that session so how it is recording it not remember it but uh, you already you have the same question in your uh, this one right yeah mock session uh, not in the mock session you have the same question in uh, uh, the attempts which exams you give a pre exam set pre attempts yep. so there also you have a same question yeah maybe i think but some of the question you will find like i have already discussed in my mock sessions i think there yes, are 7 okay. to 8 i think cpm related or this workflow also i have discussed and many times this question is asked in the interview like what is the workflow definitely they will be asking okay uh, moving to our next question how you can whitelist and blacklist application on psm server let's say you are just uh, want to whitelist let's say you have installed the microsoft edge and you want to make a connector using microsoft edge but let's say when you hit the connect button it's giving you the error fail to open process which means it is getting blocked that uh, microsoft edge is getting blocked on the psm how we can whitelist it so in the application tab we have a uh, two options like one is a uh... Uh, authentication and the other is the uh, address so if we give the address of that mission it will be whitelisted and that from that we can access that okay where sorry uh, can you uh, come again uh, in the application tab in the application tab of uh, pure bi that is for your automation purpose cp ccp yeah not for this that has nothing to do with this psm Uh, okay okay 
के व्हाट द मेन कॉन्फ़िगरेशन फाइल ऑफ पीएसएम बेसिक पीएसएम यप बेसिक अंडरस्कोर पीएसएम डॉट एन है how you how you can define a new connector to a platform uh in the connection components yep how means let's say you have developed one connector uh, using auto it scripting how you will define it and how to configure it in pww Uh, and if first that uh, uh, correction component should be available in the uh, the new uh, correction which you created that should be available in the correction component and once that is available at the platform level we can add that to the uh, psm sessions okay uh, how to configure it let's say you have created one connector how you will configure in pwl then what are the steps and what changes need to make Okay, I think you. I, if you remember when the auto IT or that web form connectors was done, so how you configured those? Going in the administration tab and uh, uh, from there we have uh, modified the like PSM underscore suppose web web application web related connectors. Yeah. and okay and there is a sample file if i'm not wrong something we we changed uh, in one of the file exactly not remembering that okay okay now what is moving to our next question uh what is the concept of dr vault why we why need to have the dr vault uh the concept of dr vault is like whenever the primary is uh, which is up and running if something goes wrong with that and it's not available so immediately we should have a backup server so for that we already uh, set up the dr service and it uh, till the time the primary is up and running it will be uh, in the sleep almost it is in the sleep state and it uh, fetches all the uh, the data which is available in the primary and it will be keep it as a backup in there so whenever the primary is down it will automatically come up and available for the components okay uh main configuration file of dr vault uh, pdr dot in yep main log file uh, pdr log okay and how to configure the automatic failover so if the uh, yeah go on yes so for automatic if the production vault is down so automatically that dr will come up so in the pdr.ini file so when that uh, enable failover should be yes and that private arc database service should be set to automatic oh, yep. so after 5 it will retry like it after 5 times so automatically the dr vault will be up Yep. Okay, and how to configure then manual uh, failover? Uh, for manual so failover, we need to set uh, uh, enable failover is equals to no and activate manual failover is equals to yes. These we need to set up and the database should be uh, uh, in the uh, manual. Okay, private arc database should be set to manual. 
Yeah. No. In the PADR.dynafile file that uh, enable pillover is uh, yes, we have to set it to no first. And then we have to add one line that activate manual failover to yes. And then we can restart the service. Okay, which service? So, DR service you know, that should be stopped in the DR site because it will because now the DR is acting as the plot, so that's why. Okay. Okay, let's say in the PADR.in you have a failover mode equal to yes or failover mode equal to no. So what's the meaning of that? If let's say failover mode equal to no, then? So the failover mode is equal to no, it means like uh, uh, the DR, uh, DR service will be up. Uh, yeah, so okay. the vault currently DR is up and running. Okay. And if it is yes, then? Uh, if it is yes, then the server is up and running. Okay, so last question, how to run full replication on the DR site? So for the DR, like we need to remove the last two lines, which is like a log number and the time. So we need to remove and save the uh, PIDR.ina and restart the DR service. So it will uh, start a full replication. Yep. Okay. Okay, guys, so like uh, I have only... Uh, written some basic you can say because these are the basic component and you can say the mandatory component but there can be multiple questions can be made out of these components so in every session and every uh, class i always say if you are good with these five components you can easily crack any interview any interview because these are mandatory component if you will go anywhere and whether it's a small or medium or large implementation, definitely you will find till DR world. DR world must be using like because these are the mandatory. Without these, they cannot use CyberArk. Let's say without CPM, they cannot change password. Without PSM, they cannot connect. So these are the mandatory component. If let's say I would have be your interviewer, <laughs> definitely I wouldn't have uh, take, <laughs> considered you for the next round. Because there were some, uh, you can say the, you were partially correct, like you all were partially correct on some questions, but that is not something uh, interviewer will uh, accept because if you are working in operation, let's say related to that CPM thing and related to this, what we say this, uh, which question, this uh, certificate thing and also this load balance. And okay, first question I can say like it was uh, some high level you can say, but apart and also this one also like you can say this one. This is discussed many times. Like I have only already discussed this many times, and this one also how to define a new connector. When you built a web form connector or using auto IT, how you define it in PWA because you test it manually on the uh, PSM server using that command. If you are making uh, auto IT connector, then how you define it in the PVW. That is also one thing. And just yeah, DR was uh, fine. Like you were able to answer, but except DR, other, other uh, were not able to answer. Like other questions which were supposed to. Okay. So let's discuss all these questions one by one. So the first question, like it was correct, the vault services, you all gave the correct answer, the main configuration file also, main log file also, and the prerequisites. But about the prerequisites, when I ask the prerequisites for the standalone or uh, HA vault, always start from the, let's say, uh, first of all, we need to build a Windows server. We need to uh, share the information to the client and he will get the server built, whether it's Windows 2016 or 19. And then uh, we need to, because all your IP address, everything will be configured by the client or the uh, server team. And then uh, you need to install .NET framework and you need to uncheck all those network items except your IPv4. You can uninstall those network items also or you can just uncheck also, that is also uh, fine. And then for the HA vault, because in HA vault you have multiple things because these are the for the standalone. 
but you are going for the HA world, then these are the mandatory only your Windows Server, .NET Framework, unchecking all network items. Plus, you need to have one public IP and one private IP on the active node and one public and on uh, one private, another on uh, your passive node. Then you need to have a virtual IP because using virtual IP only, let's say if you want your PWW or CPM to communicate to the vault, so they can, you can provide the virtual IP. That was totally fine. But private IP, why we use the private IP? Private IP is used by your active and passive to communicate with each other. Because how your passive and your uh, active will come to know like uh, your uh, this active node is up and running. Because passive just keep connecting to the uh, your active using those private IPs. And both your active node and passive nodes are connected using a fiber optic cable. So main thing is for HA it, it is always on a physical machine. Because when you you can install on the virtual also but that will be not reliable that will not give that performance what you are seeking for that will be only given like when you install on the uh, your physical machine and you connect both your ha vault using a fiber optic cable then only your one active is node is down in fraction of second your passive will come up okay and i think it was uh, related to quorum this calls also uh, i forgot yeah so what is the use of so quorum disk yeah. is was used let's say uh, your both servers are coming up at the same time so this is the only quorum disk which is just making sure one server will be always active it shouldn't create this split brain scenario okay so it will make sure like it doesn't have any confusion like which vault to come up or which passive to come up this is the only quorum disk which makes it possible. It defines the priority of your active vault because there is a uh, voting algorithm. If you will read more about the quorum disk, so there is a voting algorithm on every server when you install the quorum. So where you have the more votes, so there you will find your uh, this uh, that server will be active. More votes in the sense means the services are up. Okay. So quorum disk is used that to avoid the split brain scenario, like the confusion about the active and passive. Because if you remember, we only change the safe location path. We didn't change the the installation directory. If you remember how the HA vault is installed. Rest of the configuration file you will find in the C drive only. In S drive, uh, which is for the storage, so in that you only have the vault data only safe data only but both vault can up uh, can come uh, up at the same time if quorum disk is not being used that's why quorum is used that's the main uh, you can say uh, quorum functionality and uh, storage you are correct like that is used to just store the data your vault data you can say or save data you can say okay uh, moving to our next question, how you can collect the logs? So there is a command guys, if you will go to your installation directory on the vault server, like C program file, latest X, private arc server, and there if you will open a command prompt, and if you run a command ca vault manager dot exe space collect logs. So it will create a zip file, and in that zip file, you will see you will have dbpalm.in all the main configuration file all the log file logic container lit everything you will find in fraction of seconds ca vault manager dot exe space collect logs a one word collect logs is one word okay uh, if you see databases so uh, it will create all the logs only related to the vault only uh, yes vault? yes okay. vault only okay because let's say you are troubleshooting some issues you need to provide some logs to the uh, cyber support so this command you can use okay. this will create a zip file it which will include your policies like your db palm also your uh, related to logic container every log file everything will be attached automatically it will create a zip file 
and what will be the debug level of that uh, files Anil? Uh, as per the we mentioned in the dbpam.ini or it will be no no it will be the same problem. only what you have mentioned in your dbpam okay okay, yeah. okay. Uh, moving to our next question if you see database is corrupt so guys one thing if your database is corrupt which means you cannot do anything yeah so in that scenario yep. uh, we can reinstall the vault and we can uh, get back the data yep. from the existing dr using the dr service yep. but in that case what you need to do first of all in that case every time we'll reach out to the cyber support only if there is any anything we can do it because we don't have any uh, you can say uh, any permissions on related to database on the vault server but still okay. we can check with the cyber support if they are able to fix it then it's totally fine otherwise we need to build a new server only and and also there will be a chance let's say uh, your database is corrupt so in dr can also be corrupted so it may happen so in that case if that is also corrupted in that case we will use that pa restore like you can restore using your backup you can build a okay. new server and you can restore your complete environment okay but uh need like uh, did it come across any such scenarios where the database uh, no in production it didn't uh, happen in virtual lab you can okay. see that in virtual lab if you shut down the servers automatically in a log file you mm -hmm. will say you will uh, you are hit with a bug you will see that but in production i never yes. seen this okay okay uh, which db is being used by the vault it was correct it is my sql or you can say my sql same okay uh, can pwa be installed on physical server yes every component can be installed on physical server but as you know physical servers are uh, cost uh, the cost will be high maintenance will be high so that's why generally we install vault on physical only rest of the component we go for uh, the virtual only okay uh, what is the main prerequisites so it's it was also correct like it is the uh, your windows dotnet those are the common but main is your is web services or you can say web server okay uh, main configuration file of the pwa so there are you can say multiple uh, log, uh, the main configuration you have because that is something related to your is also correct you have okay. web yeah. also because your pwa totally depends upon your web server yes so in the uh, you will see inet pub and ww root there also you will find some you can say uh, some main configuration and apart from that if you will consider only for the pwa so there is a xml file is there pv configuration dot xml that is okay. most important because if you are upgrading let's say you are upgrading your pwa so always uh, we take the backup of pv configuration dot xml and there is a policies also and those files you will find in the pv config safe when you log into private our client there is a pv config save is there and in that you will find that pv configuration dot xml and your policies also i think there is one policies dot something is there so we you need to take the backup of all the files which are present in the pv config because if what happens sometime you are upgrading the pwa and there is some uh, issues so what we will generally do we will put all those uh, old file back to that save and try to fix it that issue okay uh, what are the internal users so this answer was also correct so there are uh, pwa app you have and pwa gateway so pwa app user is responsible for your loading that website and if that is suspended your url will not load it will give an error like the credential uh, this app user dot ini file is there that is pwa app user is uh, out of sync or something you will find and pwa gateway user that impersonate the login and i think we were discussing about the master user correct why master user yes. because let's say if uh, pwa gateway user is allowing the master user to log in to the your portal so in that case means your pwa gateway user is having more permission than the master 
correct yes but that's not the scenario your master user is the above all those users so that's why it cannot allow the login because it doesn't have the permissions and that is as per the cyber act design if they will provide the permission let's say pww gateway user having the permission then then in that case pww gateway user will be having more permissions than the master if it's able to allow that uh, user okay uh i think okay sorry uh, certificate related so uh, this answer was also partially correct but uh, it was correct let's say you will uh, ask the respective team they will provide you a certificate and generally we use the dot pfx dot pfx that is a one extension you can say and dot pfx contains a private key and how the private key come into picture when you raise a csr csr is certificate uh, signing request which contain the information about that server your uh, what we say the dns name your uh, cn name common name and locality country and everything it will contain so that you need to create so how you can create a csr if you will go to your uh, this certificate manage local uh, certificate you will find one option and when you will go to personal then you can right click and click on all task and it will show one option create a custom request and there you can you need to provide the information let's say your common name of your pwa your uh, locality your country and your uh, alternative names or dns name and then if you will proceed further then it will ask you whether you want to allow the private key to be exported or not so in that case we allow it if you allowing it then only that certificate which you will get from the uh, certification authority team then only it will have a private key associated otherwise it will not so after you generate a csr let's say you have completed all these steps it will ask you to save it and it will be extension will be dot csr only so that and it will be something begin with certificate and end with certificate it will have the this thing and it will have uh, your some uh, you can say symbols there will be 10 to 15 lines will be there something and that you need to share with the uh, your certification authority team because using that information only they will provide you a certificate and then you can uh, it was correct you can install on the pwa and that should be installed in the personal store only and then you can bind to the is and after that you can uh, reset the is and your certificate will be applied okay yep okay moving to our cpm one if you have only one license so generally uh, this is very uh, rare you will find because generally we uh, every client is having more than uh, one cpm license but in some scenario you will find it so in that case what we do let's say you install one cpm okay and you are installing the second cpm so what will happen if you will uh, provide because it will it will ask you for that uh, password manager one or two something and you will not get yeah. option to provide password manager because if you are providing password manager one or something it will consume a new license correct so in that case yeah. what we do we just install the second cpm and there is an option we will create the environment later on vault environment okay you remember where we provide the ip address and the port number is already there cyber arc administrator and ah. that all so we do yes, it yes. skip that part so what will happen let's say we skip that part so that will be installed cpm and the services will not be running so let's say if your active cpm is down so what we will do we will copy the uh, your main configuration file let's say your user.ina everything to the second cpm and then what we will do we will reset the is sorry uh, sorry uh, not the is the cred file okay and then uh, after just uh, resetting that cred file providing the password and same updating in the your private arc client 
and then we can start the services. So that is also called a D, uh, you called CPM and hot CPM. Hot means your active CPM, call is standby. Okay, and here like uh, I have one question here. Yeah. So uh, while we doing a load balancing on the PSM, how that will be possible? Like uh, PSM? why I'm asking you? Yeah. Or CPM? PSM, PSM. Okay, what? Uh, so PSM nothing to do with the CPM? No, no, that is okay. Like uh, I got that into the mind now. So. How uh, we go with the uh, load balancing on the CPM, sorry, PSM. So why? Because every PSM uh, server is having their own uh, user type. Yep. Like, so when we go with the load balancer with the virtual IP, uh, how uh, from the PWA where we download that uh, uh, RDP file, how it will be connected to, to which, C, uh, which PSM there? So when we configure the load balancer, we go to the uh, mm -hmm. administration tab option and there you will see mm -hmm. the privilege session manager some field is there and if you will expand yeah. it you will find a psm configured server something all the list yes. of your psm which you have installed uh, yes there yep. will be all the psm servers yep. list. so what we generally do we will copy that and we will rename to something psm hyphen lb or psm hyphen load balancer and but we, uh, for example, we have four PSMs, then uh, four, uh, a list of four will be shown there, yep. right? Yeah. So what we will do, we will just configure it uh, that PSM LB something, and there we will provide the IP address or the FQDN of your uh, load balancer, the port number, everything. So after it is configured, okay. then your PSM must have the DNS and uh, the, uh, what we say, the certificate which you are using the certificate let's say you are using rdp over ssl certificate for psm hmm. so that certificate should contain the information about the dns your load balancer dns load balancer hmm. uh, you can say the uh, ip or fqdn it should contain uh, okay and but, uh... then that psm load balancer uh, i the id you which you have created under administration tab that you need to provide to every platform. Okay. Because by default, if you will go to the platform, there is a PSM uh, hyphen uh, or underscore server is there. That is the default yes, one. So that you need to change okay. it. Mm -hmm. So when, when okay. you will hit the connect, then it will go to the LB only. Then LB will route it. Uh, yeah. So if a four different servers are having a four different uh, uh, PSM connect uh, names and the different passwords, so whenever the user is trying to like in a general scenario yeah. when the user clicks on the rdl rdp file yeah. so it will get the uh, it should get a P, uh, psm connect user and password right yep. for that. so load balancer so, will not get it will only route the traffic yeah, yeah. so uh, in that file which uh, psm connect pass uh, username and password will be there we have a four server yeah it will which, which if it's a local psm connect and admin connect it will have let's say psm a is there so it will have that uh, uh, psm connect uh, you username and password well it's a local user not the uh, you can say domain Oh, yes, yes, yes. So in the server here, uh, PSM connect here and its password, uh, two and its password, three and its password. Yep. So when the user opens that RDP file, so to uh, for, uh, in, uh, to which server it will connect? It will connect to the share. same PSM so, only, which where that account exists. But the account doesn't exist on the PSM, right? Uh, the PSM is only for the isolation when you install the psm where that psm connect gets created on that local machine then it exists on that psm only so when you open that rdp file so in which means your psm yeah. connect is login to the psm only ah yeah uh, so into the psm only yep. so uh, we have a uh, four different users there so which user credentials will come into that file rdp file so at the PS, like, let's say you uh, you are using a load balancer and there are four PSM, PSM 1, 2, 3, 4. 
so yes, yes, yes. as per the routing algorithm which lb uh, lb has routed the traffic to psm uh, 3 so it will have the psm 3 uh, psm con uh, the psm connect user okay so based on the routing algorithm yep. uh, the psm gateway uh, sorry uh, which one uh, pw gateway fetches the passwords no. for that and it will no so guys uh, this question uh, like many times i think i have shared my blog also if you will see on the blog also it is mentioned when you hit the connect button it's always your pwa app user not the gateway user okay pwa app user will fetch the password of your psm connect user and then psm connect log in to the psm locally and then your comes your psm gateway user that fetches the password of the target machine okay and then the session is established if it's a non rdp then your shadow user session will be established using the shadow user if it's a windows machine then shed the your session gets established using the psm connect only not with okay. the shadow user always remember shadow user gets created only for non rdp clients means other than the windows for your ssh website database for those only your shadow user will be created not for the windows okay so if i am clicking on the connect button so if i have two psm psm 1 and 2 so randomly it will take me to psm 1 or 2 or it is like you mentioned on the routing algorithm so it is set only like it will go to psm 1 only no no so what uh, let's say if you are using the load balancer so it will depend upon your load balancer routing algorithm okay. and if let's say you have two uh, psm and you have defined in the platform if you will go to if you will add it a platform there is a privilege session management is there there you need to provide the id of a psm if you let's say you have provided the id of psm server a so it will be go to your first psm if you have provided the id of psm server 2 it will go with the second okay. but if you mention the load balancer it will go to the load balancer yep. okay how psm uh, record the session so there is a when you install the psm so if you will go to your control panel on the psm you will find there is a infognition screen processor gets installed and that is only responsible for recording the screen when you are seeing that message you are being recorded which means that is by your infognition screen processor if you will go to your psm in the control panel programs or uninstall where you find the uninstall option there you will see infognition something will be there so that is used for recording the session video recording okay uh moving to our next question how you can whitelist and blacklist application on the psm server have you heard about the app locker anyone yeah. yes so app locker is being used to whitelist and blacklist the applications which are running on the psm and it's a microsoft feature not the uh, you can say psm it's a feature on the microsoft itself which is which you can use to whitelist and blacklist which application you wanted to run and after 12.2 version dll while ordering dll files are getting stuck and like by using app locker in here i guess yep. not um, every from starting on the we were using app locker it's not something the process has changed you can earlier you need to uh, update the dll file from the policies but you can update in the uh, that psm locker dot uh, xml file also and from your local policy also okay uh what's the main configuration file for the psm this was also correct PA, uh, basic underscore psm dot in okay how do how you define a new correct new uh, connector to a platform so let's say you have built one connector it's a auto it or a web form 
so you if you remember you will go to administration tab option there is a con there is a connection components are there yes. so you need to duplicate let's say uh, you can duplicate those if it's a web form so generally we duplicate a psm web app sample and then we will provide some name or you can say the id and then we will configure the uh, logon url then uh, that uh, inspect activity everything and same id we will go to that platform where you have onboarded that account and we will provide that id under connection component so it will start reflecting in your uh, connect button you you have seen a drop down there so there it will start reflecting and for the auto it thing you need to provide the path like your auto it.exe path plus your your script path script path correct and then same id you need to go to platform and then assign it under connection component add a connection component and it will start reflecting under your accounts and then using that connector you can connect to it okay uh rest like the dr vault was absolutely correct you gave all the answers correct so still wanted to discuss about dr vault or it's totally fine no it's fine yeah. i think you were having some question uh, money gun you can ask yeah yeah near and near like if we have two drs uh, so in that case how do we perform the dr drill so generally we like we will it's a valid question yeah it's a valid generally we have a uh, 2 dr we can have it on both are stand alone so okay in that case and both are just uh, syncing with the primary only so in that case on one dr we will disable that uh, automatic failover because it is not possible to uh, do it with the both the drs so we will disable the automatic failover on the uh, one dr Okay. and will perform with the another one yeah and near like uh, so one dr uh, however the dr will be in the sleep mode right can we use that dr for a read only purpose uh, if any no. no. it it is okay. not something uh, read only because if let's say your primary is down so you can use any of those dr and in dr okay. that is a distributed vault concept if in distributed vault if your primary vault or master vault is down then your satellite vault will can only provide uh, can only be used for the read purpose only you cannot write okay. something okay okay and near if uh, the password rotation uh, at the platform level is set to no and in the master policies uh, we have it set it to the 90 days uh, so in that case uh, what will be the password rotation it will not happen if you have changed that perform periodic to no then fire password will not be rotated by cpm automatically okay okay so if we add this platform to the exceptions tab uh then you need to make that option perform periodic change equal to yes then only cpm uh, will be changing the password automatically otherwise it will not uh, no no i think i uh, ask you the in the wrong way so the password rotation is set to no and it uh, added to the exceptions uh, which is having 90 days rotation okay. so in that case so what will be the uh, password rotation 90, 90 only because not the 90 before uh, expiration generally it will change on uh, 85th day 5 okay. days before okay on your password you can say okay but uh, it's set to 90 days mm. but uh, the auto rotation uh, gave we as a no right so then still why it is rotating the password where you, the auto rotation is given now in the platform level in the platform level, we have an uh, auto rotation is equals to yes or no right no there is option perform periodic change that makes your automatic password policy to yes or no so if you, if you okay. have made it no then it will not that's why i am saying cpm will not rotate the password automatically okay okay so that parameter should be set to yes then only it will rotate the password automatically okay okay and and here uh, so we generally we give uh, for the root accounts the login accounts we will give yeah. right so will be there any specific permission for that login accounts we need to no just login account will login and it it should have the switch permission 
okay search to root so even be boarding that account into the uh, cyberac uh, do we need to give any specific no 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 uh, cyberac side nothing because that account is created on the unix unix team will be doing it okay yeah. and we uh, like uh, what are the plugins for the cpm uh, plugin engines used for the cpm so there are different different for windows you have pm windows dot dll for unix it is cyberac tpc for website is it is ca net invoker and for database it's pm uh, odbc dot dll so there are different different plugins which are used to rotate the password okay but do you do anything with that uh, plugins or uh, oh. so if you want to generate a plugin from scratch you should be good in the scripting either powershell or python okay because you need to write the script let's say there is a website face let's take the example of facebook you want to rotate the password of your facebook account so there okay. will, will be some way you how you will connect to it using a script because manually you can do it using uh, the providing the username and password but how you do it with the script so in that case either you need to use api or something and in that case you need to write a script either python powershell or vb script okay and uh, near uh, which user will be responsible for the psmp uh, credential validation is the psmp connect only the same process is there you don't have the psmp admin connect you have psmp connect okay. only process is the same only when you just uh, okay. hit the connect button it what it will do it will your uh, pwa app user will come into picture it will get the credential of psmp connect and then it will establish the connection to the target machine okay okay um neer uh, suppose uh, how can we check this uh, cpm connector tpc connector you are saying yep. tpc plugin you are yep. saying then suppose uh, somebody like a vendor uh, upgraded uh, the or like uh, connector uh, plugins mm -hmm. how can we check and where exactly we can check? in the cpm bin folder you will find the all these plugins cyberarc tpc.exe and in platform also if you will edit a platform there you will see Cy cyberarc the cpm plugin option if you will click on it you will see what are the plugins uh, used for this uh, particular platform every different platform will have a different plugin in in platform which option uh, if you will edit a platform under uh, your password management automatic password management mm -hmm. thank you and there in the pwa load balancing scenario like uh, can we know what is the algorithm we are using uh, for the uh, balancing like whether it's a round robin or which algorithm is being so used can we that that uh, you can check with your lb team but mostly and cyberarc also recommend it's always a least connection only okay. least okay. connection means let's say your 4p psm are there or pwas are there so which is having less connection so it will route to that that particular uh, pwa or psm only Okay. Uh, and the last one. Uh, so whenever we use a workflow methods, uh, so what is the uh, permissions we give for the main user? Let's say I am the user, mm -hmm. and my account is having a workflow mechanism with the two-level authentication mm -hmm. approvals. Mm -hmm. So for me, what will be the appropriate permissions to uh, work the workflow? List and workflow permission. uh but in the workflow we have a uh, two of yep. the level 1 yep. and level 2 only yep. right so what what is the exact uh, so the level 1 will Means, be the first level approval yeah. so if you have set the uh, two level approval multi uh, there is an option in the dual control to set up so if you have set up that so me which means there are two approvals are required let's say you approved it then it will go to a second approver okay which is having level 2 approval uh, request then once he approve then only you will someone will be able to use that account uh, okay so uh, for me like uh, the authorized account request one and uh, that will be uh, for me no no uh, means let's say there is a user a is there so he yes, wants yes. to use an account 
and yeah. multi level approval is set on that account so let's say you yeah. are having list and uh, level 1 authorization permission uh, me, okay. i am having level 2 authorization permission so first that request will come to you from user a once you approve it then it will come to me once i approve it then only user a will be you, uh, able to yeah. use that account so the uh, yeah the level 1 and level 2 i understood so what is the yeah the user a permissions on that stage? it will be the list and use only okay the okay. so list list permission he can see that account use permission he can use that account okay yep. so apart from that and nothing from the workflow he yes. has access no right. workflow oh, okay. should be to them who are who should be approvers okay yep. so if the none of the safe members are having the uh, workflow uh, like uh, permissions then uh, the workflow is not implemented at that safe level uh, no so generally your vault admins will be having all the permission on the safe level so they can also okay. approve a request approve or disapprove okay okay so that you need to configure it if you have configured the dual control then only this workflow and everything will come into picture otherwise it will not okay okay yeah uh, that's that's only need i have one the question okay so guys please practice try to try to take one component at a time try to explore it lots of things are there if you will spend uh, some time on one component just try to spend it because in interview they can and uh, i hope you have faced some interviews and you have seen like they are uh, mostly asking now scenario based i think one or two questions will be direct apart from that they will ask some scenario based on so just try yeah. to explore and first make these five components uh, you can say everything like at least you need know 70 80% it's hard to know each and everything but at least you can say 60 70 you know about these components then only proceed to next level uh, proceed to advanced component like your aim or your pta your uh, you can say other integration and etc